the scheduled tournament events of the 2017 Renegade Bass Series have come to an end, but one special event remains. This morning, eight teams that were the top contenders in the Renegade Tournament are gathering together to battle it out one last time. Three winning teams from the Under 150 Horsepower Series, the top Pro-Am team, and four top Pro teams from the Renegade Qualifiers and the Canadian Bass Classic will be the players battling it out for bragging rights. They're meeting on a body of water here in the Kingston area that these teams have no prior knowledge of. The teams were informed of the location the night before to help ensure that this location remains an even playing field for all of the participants. No prior experience and no pre-fish. It's all about knowledge, intuition and skill. Who will be the first to figure out the pattern? Who will find the biggest bass? And who will claim the top position in the Tournament of Champions? The teams have all put their boats in the water, awaiting the start of the tournament. Teams spend their time putting together last-minute adjustments and having discussions about the location. Today's competition is taking place on a small lake in the Kingston area. The eight teams were informed of its location 15 hours prior to its start. First time down here, so like everybody else that hasn't fished here, do a little bit of homework on Navionics and was up, I think, till 12.30 last night and drove, what, two and a half? hours to get here so at the end of the day we'll see what happens that's what you got to do is figure the fish out you knew it would be like in the area you know within probably an hour's driving distance but uh yeah no no idea no knowledge of the lake but you know if fish is similar i would assume to you know most of the Rito lake system you know it's going to be deep mill foil and, and shoreline Never even seen it. See, it's the first time we've seen it this morning. First time we saw it was actually looking at a map uh, last night. So oh, yeah. it'll be interesting. It'll be fun. Just fished the Rideau chain, but uh, nothing on this lake. Did a bit of research last night. Hopefully it helps us out, but uh, we'll see. Battle looking fish. out on the lake right now, all I see is uh, weeds and mats and something we definitely like to fish. So pretty excited to get out there and get started. I didn't do a whole lot of research, but uh, Looked at a few pictures and actually looked similar to what I'm looking at now. So I'm tying on a popper and a chatterbait. We'll see what happens. We're going to be doing a paper tournament. And we've got scales for all you guys. The way these scales work, they're pretty simple. When you start them, turn them on. There's an on button. You wait for it to zero. Make sure they're in pounds and ounces. Hang your fish, wait for it to stop moving, and press the hold button. That's gonna lock the weight of the fish in to the scale, and then you can walk the scale up to the camera so you can show the weight. You're all gonna have a pad and paper. I want you to keep track of your five biggest, okay? So just write down that weight that corresponds to what you showed the camera, write down your five biggest. If you're going through the day and you know you need a two, three for your smallest, and you catch a one pounder, just chuck them. You don't have to weigh every fish. Fish like you would a normal tournament. Nothing goes in a live well. As long as one guy's calling the fish immediately, the other guy can keep fishing. All right, sound pretty reasonable? You guys are gonna fish from 8 a.m. till 12. We're back here at 12. Not running here at 12. I want everybody back here at 12. We're gonna update the weights for everybody. So you're all gonna know where you're sitting. And at 12.30, we're sending you back out till 3.30 to finish the day. Again, five biggest on paper are gonna win this. So come grab a scale, and we'll send you guys on your way. We'll get you ready to go. Without any pre-fish or experience on this water, teams can only make educated guesses on where they should fish. The choice of where to fish first will hopefully pay off right away, but more importantly, it gets them closer to understanding how to fish this body of water.
teams begin their run, three teams position themselves in and around the marina launch. Teams will quickly get to explore the shallow weed, mats, and shoreline in the area. Will that extra time with fishing pay off? The deeper water, vegetation, channels, and shoreline gave those that chose to run a variety of options. They might lose some time getting to their spots, but those spots might hold the right kind of fish. While wherever they decide to start is an important factor, it's only one of a multitude of decisions that these teams will have to make today. What will be interesting is where their first decisions lead them. Johnny Fadui and Aaron Powell are fishing the shallow pads, and three minutes into their tournament, they're on their first fish. It's not big enough to need a net, but at least they know fish are here, and they're happy to bring one in. Their first fish weighs in at 1 pound, 11 ounces. Andy Kinsler and Scott Leckie are fishing the same location with no fish yet, and they're hoping today's unseasonable weather isn't part of the problem. Well, we had, didn't have much of a summer. Fall is usually, a, you know, it's big swings of change. So it really fools with the fishing. It really makes it difficult. To it takes like half a day to figure out which change from yesterday. About 12 minutes into fishing the shoreline by the marina, Charles Nam and Jason Davis get on their first fish. They get on the board with a 2 pound 14 ounce fish. The best start so far for the teams that didn't run. Back out on the lake, boats are beginning to settle into their first spots. Matt Tooley and Blake Gore have decided to fish a spot they noticed on their way into their original location. We're just going fishing today. There's no strategy. We're just going to find whatever looks good and take your time and just start flipping the jig and see how it goes. The area has fish. Unfortunately, the one Matt brings in isn't even big enough to weigh, but it is only a few minutes into their day. Matt Boisclair and Jason Barker get on a fish minutes after settling into an inlet area. Unfortunately, it's a tiny fish as well. <laughs> I hope that's not going to be on all day a thing here. One pass on their first spot and Clancy Mulvihill quickly realizes that it won't pay off. Clancy and Joe decide to move. Lenny DeVos and Jeff DeLodge arrive at their first spot at the same time as Dave Chong and Doug Brownridge. Great minds think alike. Having selected the same point, it'll be interesting to see who gets on the first fish. It's not rocket. Oh yeah, there are pike in here. Apparently lots of them. Both teams get on the pike pretty quickly. This area might not be as great as they thought. Watch. Wait, wait. Have to? We'll get practice. Okay, tournament's over. I win. Go on. Over. <laughs> okay, so one eight. Like that. One, oh.
It's a slow start for the teams fishing the 2017 Tournament of Champions. These eight teams have been challenged with fishing a lake that they don't know and are still feeling things out. It seems that the wrong kind of fish are being aggressive this morning. Pike and fish too small to weigh in are frustrating the teams that are getting bit. Charles Nam and Jason Davis led the pack with a 2 pound 14 ounce bass, but move up a little more with this 1 pound 14 ouncer. Clancy and Joe abandon their first spot after 5 minutes and quickly hook up after they settle into their second location. It's a good fish to start the day with, boosting Clancy and Joe's confidence that they've made some good decisions. The weather today, hot and hot, sunny and calm, so uh, the morning bite should be good and then I would imagine uh, the fish will tuck up under in the afternoon, so I think it's going to be a good bite. Matt and Jason are seeing fish all around beneath them. Unfortunately, they're being kept busy by the hungry tiny bass that are dominating the area, but they know decent fish are in here somewhere. I like to short and keep my bait fairly short until we start figuring out what's going on. If they're really aggressive, then I'll hang it. Get better action when they're hanging, but but I like my bait a little bit shorter right off the hop, just in case. Lenny and Jeff have noticed a large concentration of bass in deeper water thanks to the unseasonably hot weather, and it isn't long before they hook up. Pound 12 ounce bass is a good start, but it isn't long before Lenny hooks up on something a little better. Clancy and Joe still have the biggest fish so far but Lenny and Jeff take the lead with a total weight of seven pounds, two ounces. Dave and Doug are still fishing some milfoil and shoreline in the same area as Lenny and Jeff. They're on fish, just not on the same quality fish as our current leaders. One thirteen and a half. Small fish are also causing frustration for the teams fishing in the shallows. Johnny and Aaron were able to bring in a couple of one pounders and a two pounder. Not happy with the fish they're catching, they decided that they need to try something different. Charles and Jason have moved into their second spot, and it doesn't take long to get on a fish but it arrives with a little technical difficulty. Based on this initial catch, it doesn't seem like this new area is holding any big bass either. You got one, two, and a quarter. One, two, and a quarter, but you wait. That's my first layer for the day. I'm on a roll now. Forty minutes in, Matt and Blake finally get their first fish, that they can weigh in. Well, at least I don't have a, a zero, but uh, definitely not what we're looking for. I want to see, today I would like to see three pounders coming in the boat. That would be nice. Back in the shallows, Andy and Scott hook up for the first time. Giant right off the hop. <laughs> 113. 
I think we should tell Lenny right now the tournament is over, Lenny. 113. We're heading into the second hour of the tournament. Johnny and Aaron have moved out to deeper water in the hopes of upgrading their fish. In the morning we started off, uh, we tried going up shallow. Plans were working out, but the fish weren't as big as we wanted them to be. We were uh, sticking in the one pound range. Then John wanted to go out deep, try fishing some uh, deeper milk oil. And well, that paid off real good. First five or six pounders a day. It's not the five pounder they thought it was, but this fish surpasses the weight of the first big fish of the day brought in by Clancy and Joe. Things have slowed down for Clancy and Joe after they caught their first fish. This hookup is only the second one that they've had this morning. Charles and Jason have stuck with fishing the shoreline, and it really isn't paying off. The fish they're finding are all small. With this fish, they've gotten the limit and can at least look forward to upgrading. Matt and Blake are another team that can't seem to get on any worthy fish this morning, and it's starting to stress them out. There's no issue getting fish where Dave and Doug are fishing. They've already called a couple of fish. Unfortunately, the biggest fish they have on record is two pounds, six ounces. All right, that one might come, just saying. See, that's how we do it. I break dog the fish and he catches it. Three even. Is it? Three even. Oh, that's a good call from a distance. Stick going, it's about a three even. <laughs> Andy and Scott haven't given up on the shallow shoreline, even though it hasn't delivered anything over one and a half pounds. Oh, big one here, bud. Big one, big one, big one. Big one right here. There are some shallow fish. Just, you know what? It just took a while. Not a monster, but it's a three pounder. He's got a head like a four. Lenny and Jeff are the team to fear, and there's a reason for that. They've been on fish consistently and have already called a few times. They've locked down on a pattern, and they've put themselves on the path to the right caliber of fish. Three, two and a quarter. He bit again, Jeff. That's perfect. That's what partners do. You follow each other up. 4.4. 4. I find the topwater bait right now more like a search bait. Just to see if they're there, you know. They're just coming up and just curious, eh? Just kind of coming up and kind of bumping it. They're not committing to nothing. Good one. A little bit better fish Jay just got. A few more like that. Got a long way to go yet. It's an hour before the midday weigh-in and teams fishing the Tournament of Champions are working hard to maximize the morning bite. Today is baffling. Everything here is bass. 
the whole lake it looks like it has bass in it. Like every spot, there's eight fish everywhere and there's bogs and lily pads, and weed mats, and milfoil and stumps. can't find them. Starting to get a little better. Two pounds, nine ounces. Two, eight and a quarter. We're crushing it. We're crushing them today. That's the only nice thing about writing them down. You don't have to look in the live well and see all those small fish and feel bad about them. Oh, hello. Hello. What? <laughs> that's over. Yeah, that's four, almost five. <laughs> look at the size of the yap on that thing, no body. As the noon sun arrives, teams continue to get bit. Whether or not this final flurry of activity helps will have to be seen as the teams head back to the marina for the first weigh-in of the day. Let's go. Check in and see what everybody else did. If we really stink, then uh, you know how much room we have to make up, which is not usually the case. You don't find that out in a regular tournament, so this is gonna be interesting. There might even be some trash talking on some of those guys' parts, hopefully. If we had a great morning, we'd be teasing him a little. Settling in at the dock, teams wind down a moment before they hand over their scores to RJ. Teams eat, drink, and converse before RJ returns with the final results. All right, boys, so we're here at our lunch hour break. We're gonna have a little break here, get some nourishment and drink. It's a little warm today, so. We'll just uh, give you the top three. Maybe it'll adjust how you're going to play with the afternoon. But uh, so in third place with 12 pounds, two ounce in, we have Jason and Matt. In second place with 14, eight, Aaron and Johnny. And leading at the break, Lenny and Jeff with 19 pounds, 11 ounces. Adjust accordingly or follow Lenny. With all the teams knowing where they stand, they begin to idle out, ready for the last three and a half hours of the competition. Will teams stick to their game plan from the morning, or will knowing what's leading make them do a wholesale change? The conclusion of the 2017 Tournament of Champions will continue next week. 